Hi folks, this is Mrs. Brown. The purpose of this video is to give you six steps that you can use when answering a constructed response question on the North Carolina EOC. The first thing that you want to do is to read the passage carefully. I know this may seem kind of obvious, but sometimes these tests are more about stamina, that is your ability to really keep going and to work hard and focus over a longer period of time, rather than the fact that you could do it just once. So it's really important that you not just read the passage, but that you reread the passage at least once. Once you've done that, you can reread the question so you can take a look at exactly what the question is asking you to do. Once you've done that, you can mark this up. Now, write all over the test. You want to find the key words in the question, and these might be the verbs or any verbs, character names, key literary terms, whatever it is that that question is asking you to do to make sure that you actually do that in your constructed answer. Now, step two is to take that question and kind of rewrite it in your own words. And this is one way to make sure that you know exactly what it is that you're being asked to do. And then if you take that question, you can turn it directly into the topic sentence for your answer. That's one way to make sure that you are indeed addressing the question when you put your answer together. Now the third thing is to go back to the passage again. I know it seems like you've looked at this piece a couple of times now, but that's the important part. And this is where you're going to collect the data that you need. You're looking for the relevant details for the question. And make sure if the question is asking you for three details, make sure that you go back and you find not one, not two, but three complete details. So this is where you get a chance to kind of cross-check what the question has asked you to do and what information you can grab right out of that passage in order to give a little more evidence to bolster what it is you're trying to say in your constructed response. So you've read the prompt, you've read the question, you've reread the prompt, you've gone through and taken that question and turned it into a statement, and now you've gone back to look for evidence. Well, now is where you put it into some sort of logical order. And this is a great place to use all that extra paper that they give you during the test, and you can use this to create a graphic organizer. You can create like just a little boxes for part one, part two, part three. You can turn it into a little flow chart, whatever makes the most sense to you to help you understand how to organize that information into something logical to be able to answer the question. The fifth thing you're going to do is to write your answer down and to write it neatly. Now, you don't have to agonize over this, and you know, you're not really judged in your handwriting, but it has been shown that if your writing is easier to read, it makes it easier for the person who's evaluating it to find the answers. So you do want to, I mean, don't take your time on this too much, but you do want to write as neatly as you can and get your answers down in one place. And finally, you put it all together. You get your details all organized, you use your graphic organizer, and you get it written down to answer the question. So what might that look like? Well, there's lots of different graphic organizers you can use, and your teacher might give you some sample for this. For example, you start up here with what it is that the question is answering, and then you look for your evidence, and then show how you've answered the question. But really, anything that makes sense for you is fine to you. One acronym that can help you with a constructive response is to think of the idea of ACEs. The A is answer the question correctly and completely. The C is to cite multiple details from the reading or to show that you understand the passage. The E is to stop and examine your answer. Have you actually addressed that parts of the question? And finally, the S, summarize it to show that you've proven it. So this is a way to think about acing your constructive response. Now let's think about the constructive response from the other side, from the teacher or the administrator or the evaluator who's going to sit down someplace in a room and read all of these from these students that they've never met. So they're looking for some very specific things and they have a rubric put in place to help them find those things in your answer. So for example, if you had a prompt, and I know you didn't read this story, but you can just kind of imagine along with me here, and if your constructed, re your constructed response question said, what effect is caused by the narrator's discussion with the chemist at the end of the selection. Include one example from the text to support your answer. Well, let's suppose that's what you had to answer. 
So you're going to write a response to that prompt and then sitting in a room someplace is going to be an adult you've never met and they have a choice of giving you anything between a zero and a two. So you're going to either score a zero, a one, or a two. Now to get those full two points on that, look at this wording really carefully. Clearly and coherently, coherently means in a logical way, identifies the effect that is created by the narrator's discussion with the chemist at the end of the selection, supports the answer with one relevant example from the text. Now, to get a score of one, you might not get full credit if you fulfill only one of the two requirements at level two. So notice there's two requirements. The first is to identify the effect, and the second is to support it with an example. If you only do one of those two things, you get one point. Or you might end up with a score of zero, and that's if you just decide, eh, I'm tired, I'm done with this whole thing, I don't want to bother anymore, and you don't put down any response at all. Or if your response really does not address the prompt, you seem to be writing about a completely different story, about a dream you had last night, or you just write down something like, I like cheese, you know, something that has nothing to do with the actual question. And that obviously is not going to earn you any points on that. You don't want to be there. So for a summary, when you get to the constructed response part of your final exam, you want to carefully read the prompt. You want to make sure you're using evidence directly from that text. It's right there in front of you. Go back and get that evidence. Use the language of literature. If you know words like irony, don't just say, well, it was kind of a weird coincidence. Say that was ironic. Use that kind of language. And then check again, did you actually answer the prompt? And you can remember the ACEs. Answer the prompt correctly, cite your evidence, examine that you've actually answered the question, and summarize your response. And hopefully that's going to get all of you lots and lots of twos on your constructive responses.